guys, this week on Awesome Cast, we're talking about Facebook paper, we're talking about new ways to pay, Google Chromecast, and so much more. Awesome Cast. I'm getting awesome, you're getting awesome, we're getting awesome, yeah, that's what I said now. Hey guys, welcome back to the Awesome Cast 184 coming at you from Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Michael Sorg here at Sorgatron on Twitter, ready to get geeky, ready to have some fun. Uh, with me, first of all, in studio is Katie Dutter. Student, uh, Katie Dutter. <laughs> yes, that's your name now. Yes, that's Katie your Dutter's name. Perfect. I, I read two things and just mashed them together. <laughs> apparently, uh, how are you doing this week? Good. How are you? Awesome, awesome. I, I know you're excited about the Super Bowl. Oh yeah, the commercials. Commercials. Forget the game. I'm about the commercials. That's what that's what we always <laughs> tune in for. Especially uh, we already talked movies on the movie minute earlier tonight and everything like that. Uh, so also with us remotely because I guess there's a storm coming. I don't know. I haven't seen outside today. Is John Chichilla at Chilla on Twitter? How you doing this week? Pretty good. How are you? All right. All right. Also joining us as seen on TV is one Jim Loke, uh for coming at oh. us from Boston. How you doing, sir? Hey, man. Good to see you. Awesome. Kind of an extreme close up on my end. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> and also a first time uh, with us this week uh, from the Creative Brief podcast is John DeGore uh, hi, at Diggy on Twitter. How you doing, sir? Not too bad. So, first of all, you're the newbie. Tell us, uh, what is uh, Creative Briefs, for those that don't know? Um, so creative Briefs is a podcast where we basically interview people doing creative things slash projects about their philosophies and attitudes about it is what they work on. So, kind of a mix between a more informal interview and a kind of formal slash informal interview, I guess is the best way to say it. Awesome, awesome, and, and and mostly Pittsburgh based, which I think it's really good to see creative types. You know, and I, of course, yeah. I, I know you had some touring people actually just stopping by Pittsburgh too recently. Yeah, um, so we try and do. As, I mean, since we're in Pittsburgh, we try and do our podcast with our guests live, like in person, so we all share the same mic. Um, it makes it a little bit more intimate and makes people more at ease. Where in the design world, people can get really worried about their P's and Q's, and we want them to feel comfortable. So we try and do all of our interviews are in person, uh, and occasionally we go out of town. So if we go out of town, we'll get some people from outside the city. Nice, nice. Whereas I have gone completely digital <laughs> on this stuff. Um, awesome. Uh, and of course, uh, like I said, this is the Awesome Cast. We're here recording live every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, you can drop us a line. We're uh, at AwesomeCast on Twitter. We're on Google+. Plus. We're on Facebook. Uh, you can also drop us a line at AwesomeCast at uh, SorgatronMedia.com on the email. Uh, we're available on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Stitcher, and Spreaker, amongst other places if you look us up. Uh, so let's get right off with the uh, awesome things of the week. Uh, let's our, let our new guy, uh, Diggy, tell us, tell us what you got here. Um, so, yeah, the... Let me see. Base. I can't remember all these. Yeah, the base is health tracker. So I know you. I you know I'm a. I listen to Awesome Cast every week, and there's been a lot of talk about some of these health sensors that you can wear all the time to help you keep track of what's going on. So what the problem is with a lot of those health sensors, like Fitbit, um, the majority of the ones out there are they are really making assumptions about what your actual health rate, your uh, not health rate, sorry, your heart rate are. And the basis health tracker actually can track your heart rate. It has a little laser that's on the underside of like this watch interface that kind of is able to read your pulse through your wrist. So it's giving an actual accurate tracking of your heart rate instead of just kind of guessing all of it based off of the other information it's pulling in. Which I think is really interesting if you're really trying to get some deep level data or really, I mean, I think just it's a better accurate representation of what like your sleeping patterns are and the actual amount of work you're doing when you go through a run is your heart rate so it's a little bit more pricier than the fitbit um it's gone down price recently the last year's model is a little bit cheaper and the only difference i've seen so far in the differences is one has a fancier strap they haven't really gone into details about the difference between 2014s and 2013s um i haven't gotten yet i think this is the one i'm going to get because i'm going to start changing changing 
crap. Sorry, guys. Anytime you put me in front of a microphone, I immediately lose the immediately lose the ability to talk. Which, if you listen to my podcast, you would know. <laughs> so I'm going to be training for the half marathon soon. And I think I'm going to get this one instead of the the Fitbit Flex, which is what I had been looking at previously. Nice, nice. So, so is it? So it's going to be more accurate. Like uh, my wife has a. a uh, the Fitbit, I think it's, I think it's the flex one. That's just the armband, not the watch or anything like that. Um, so, so this is doing a better job at, at, at your heart rate then. So those aren't actually tracking your actual heart rate. What they're doing is making it assumptions based off the data you put in, okay. like your height, your weight, and then how fast and how far you're going. Cause that's okay. really what Fitbit's tracking is the, how far, how fast you're going. And it can track, I think the new one can track how high you're going as well. Yeah. But yeah. it's not actually tracking your heart rate. The base is is actually tracking your heart rate. Okay, so it's Would, it's basically saying actually that that is right because I think I think uh, uh, Missy actually does have a pedometer alongside it. So <laughs> so it's just saying you're walking this much uh, at this rate. We know you weigh this much and you're this age. We think you're doing around this. Yes. Okay. It's guessing. It's kind of estimating what your heart rate should be, um, where basis is actually reading your heart rate. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. Is, is it um is, is it compatible? Does it does it communicate with the phones or? Like um, it, I, I believe it does have a phone app. It's uh, it definitely has a web based app, and I think it has a phone based app as well. Awesome. There should be some pictures of it up on their website. Because their website doesn't go into a lot of depth, so there's only like three or four pages into it. Awesome. And that's at mybasis.com if you guys want to check that out, too. Yeah, so. they're also on Amazon as well. Cool. Go check that out. Uh, okay, what do you got? First of all, uh, you know, it's funny you mentioned that about the Fitbit, because first of all, um, you are right. The the newer one, the Force, has an altimeter built in so it can count how high you go. And on the subject of heart rates, I did a story yesterday with uh, AT&T about some different apps. And there's an app, which I didn't know about, called, I think it's Instant Heart Rate where what it uses is the camera lights on your phone to supposedly read your pulse through your finger. Mm -hmm. And it actually was fairly accurate, so I was surprised by that. Um, but one of the things we've been covering quite a bit, and I know a lot of us uh, you know, may have been concerned about in one way, shape, or form, has been the credit card breaches all across the country. And there's been a lot of talk about switching the kind of credit cards we use from that magnetic stripe to more of a smart card based system. The problem is uh, the retailers and the credit card companies are fighting over who would pay it because it would be a huge cost. So there are these other um, uh, alternative forms of credit card processing like Level Up, which is right here in Boston. It's not new, but they're really getting a lot of investments. Uh, a lot of people are investing significant amounts of money in Level Up. And what it does is you link it with a credit card, but what it does is generates a unique uh, QR code on your phone. And you go to the different retailers and you scan your phone, which creates a different QR code every time you use it. One of the advantages uh, is obviously that's that's unique, but also from a business aspect, they are really significantly cutting down on the amounts of fees that they're charging these credit card companies. So rather than paying a percentage of every transaction, I think they're lumping them together and taking a smaller, smaller cut, a very small cut off the top. So it's uh, it's expanded. I believe that they, they, they've tried to roll out in Pittsburgh. I don't know if they have yet, but uh, they're based here in Boston, so they're, pr they're pretty widespread. They've, they've got some big retailers on board here in the Boston area. So this is actually a new, like like from the pictures, there, there is actually a new unit they, somebody would have to install as a retailer. Yeah, that's uh, I, I think it's Honeywell that makes makes those. Okay. And um, I, I, I believe, and I'm trying to remember, I think some of the retailers here I believe some of the retailers here actually have it integrated into their POS system. There's actually a uh, there's a place called Beloco, which stands for Boston Local Company. It's a local burrito chain, and they're pretty popular. I think they have about a dozen dozen chain a dozen dozen locations. And that was a big get for Level Up. And actually, one of the really cool things about Level Up, I think, is that what they do is in place of Level Up taking a large cut of the sales, they go to these businesses and say, okay. We'll let you install our system, but you have to offer some sort of loyalty. So, you know, a lot of these retailers, a lot of these restaurants will give you two or three bucks off your first purchase. And then it has a built in loyalty system where I know uh, one of the burger places I go to for every $50 I spend using Level Up, I'll get $5 back. 
So it's kind of a, it, it, it kind of kills two birds with one stone. I think it's pretty interesting. I think that it's something you can catch on. Uh, it doesn't use uh, um, uh, NFC technology. It just uses that QR code. Although I think when you think about it, the NFC uh, technology, the near field communication, isn't a bad a bad option down the road either. But you got to get Apple on board with it. It, it really seems, yeah, and it really, yeah, and so it's universal right off the bat. It really feels like uh, kind of an advanced square in the yeah. long run. Like, like, because I know Square, I, I think they were starting to get the loyalties program into it. Again, I haven't used it. I, I use it for just, you know, DVD table stuff. Not We don't have the, you know, cafe anymore. I was starting to look into the deals and that mm -hmm. high level stuff. But yeah, it looks like we can throw in like the, what we would do with Foursquare, but they're if they're using this, it's more integrative. If it's more of a forward thinking area, like, you know, like this burrito place you were talking about, yeah. um, that, that, you know, people will be trying this new technology. Um, I, I really like how it, it, it does it does integrate like that yeah it's 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 a pretty i think it's i think it's great i mean i, I and and i think that uh you know i know that if i have level up in my pocket and I'm, I'm near a place that i've visited a couple of times i'll say hey i'll go because i'm, I'm close to getting that 50 dollar point you know the 50 dollar price point so um i think it's a matter of just convincing people to use it but one thing i like that it does as opposed to square i know starbucks had been trying to move to that model where they're trying to roll out Square and more of their, more of their uh, locations, is Level Up actually has a, um, I'm, I'm grabbing my phone to uh, just kind of show it if I can, but they actually have a gratuity function built right in. So when I go to, a, when I use it in the restaurants, I can also choose, as, as I hold this up here, um, this, this is, it, it's, it, there's my unique code and on the bottom, I can choose different gratuities and it will change that QR code. Okay. Now, if you're in a rest, like a, a restaurant, and someone comes out, like the person comes over to give you your bill, normally you would give them your credit card, and then they walk away with it, they swipe it, mm -hmm. and they bring it back. Do you give them your phone, or do they bring something over to the table? Or actually, I have not used it in a sit-down environment yet. Okay. Everybody, I've, everywhere I've used it has been, you know, going up to a counter and using it. Um, I, I to, to be honest with you. I don't know if there are sit-down restaurants. I know there are actually clothing stores as well that have been using it as well, uh, using it too. So I mean, it's it's got it's gotten out of just the just the restaurant mode. But when I say restaurant, I guess I'm using that term pretty loosely. And, and I think there, there there are several options. It looks like uh, trying to find the page that I was at before because it, it showed like the POSs and then it showed like integrated you know phone versions of it. So I, I think this is something that if there's a restaurant that does have this integrated, they would have maybe iPod touches or something they would bring to the table. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that makes sense. And, and it reminds me actually, I think it, it, it was only a couple of years ago, but I was with our buddy Norm um, at uh, at a restaurant called Storms in downtown Pittsburgh, and I was so amazed that it and i want to say this was maybe 2009 2010 that we were paying with our credit cards and it came over and they swiped the table side and we entered our, our tip right on the credit card reader i'm thinking oh my gosh the technology where is it going and and now uh you know there's so many different applications out there you know like uh, uh you know chris dilla out of Bocktown uses um uh the one app where you can view your phone tabbed out view your yeah. view your tab right on your phone so uh, it's really changing the way that we pay, we pay for, for what we do when we eat, when we go out. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love these, for, these forward thinking ideas to, to switch that up, especially it makes sense in something like, 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 you know, a bar or something or, you know, restaurant mm -hmm. bar, like, like Bocktown. Cause I know like the worst thing is, oh, getting somebody so I can get my check. It's like, I can just right. sign it off and walk out, you know, and yeah. that's it. You know, um, I think that's, that, that's tremendous. Awesome. Uh, Chilla, what do you got? I got the... Pebble came out with version two on Monday. It actually okay. released, I think, kind of late in the day. Um, so their new app obviously updates the firmware on your watch. And then within the new app, they also have an app store with over a thousand apps. Um, so I downloaded it. The interesting thing about the app store is right now too, is that for you to have an app in their app store, it has to be free. Hmm. So I'm guessing they didn't actually come up with a payment engine yet. But they obviously have the ability to query what apps you had on your phone. Because as soon as I downloaded the new app from the Apple App Store on my iPhone, it loaded. It then contacted my watch, completely updated that, eh, probably within about two minutes. And then I got an email immediately saying, thank you for upgrading to Pebble 2.0. Make sure you check out the app with the new App Store. And then it said... Oh, and by the way, 
if these are the apps that you had on your on your watch that are not 2.0 compatible, but we'll email you when they become available. So I thought that was that was pretty neat. It's kind of interesting that you, you really didn't get apps direct from Pebble before. Now they're coming through their app store, but they obviously kind of check to see what you had before you upgraded. Um, I, I, some of the watch faces are missing that I, that I actually enjoyed, but I mean to me that's not that big of a deal. Um, the one thing that that's that seems to have, that they seem to be doing a lot more with is allowing the watch to interface all the way out to the internet. A lot of times you had to have helper apps on your phone that would then connect, and they have those ones still listed if it requires an additional application or if you can just use the built-in Pebble app to allow that communication. So, I mean, it's pretty impressive. Like, I, I downloaded a couple of the free apps. They actually have an app called Pebble Cards, and it's a lot like the Google Now Cards. Nice. So you can get, like, stock quotes, and you get current your current location, temperature, a bunch of other information. Um, going through here, I have Smart Status, Smart Watch Plus, which are pretty much the ability to interface back to the phone to get some of that same data. It's not as nice as the Cards app because the Cards app does a lot more with figuring out where you're physically located right now and then much like Google Now going in and querying different things. Um, the one thing that did surprise me, and, and I checked right before the show still, um, the Android version is not out yet. Yeah, so, I did see it was coming soon when I first saw this article. Um, kind of interesting they got into iOS first. It, when it's, I've seen that as, a, as something over the last couple of days. I, I, for a while there, we saw apps and, and, and things coming out simultaneously for all platforms. And um, I think you have it for your awesome thing of the week, and that'll make it a good segue. There's another app that was released this week that is iOS only. Mm -hmm. And that would be uh, Facebook's paper, uh, which is making some ways, not just for being a new way to look at Facebook, but uh, also because uh, and I thought this the first time they announced it. Hey, you guys remember the great paper app? We've talked about it on the show. I think back when Rob was still on it. Like the, the, you put it on an iPad and it has all these brushes and everything. I've actually pulled that thing out to demonstrate like web design to a, to a student one time. Um, so they, they're they already going at Facebook uh, for this. But w w what is it? Um, basically think of, it's really just kind of a new interface for Facebook. Um, think if they kind of flipboarded the interface and instead of them redesigning the main Facebook app it's kind of nice that they did this like you know on the outside so we don't have up all the change of back groups we usually get with Facebook right um, have you have any of you guys played with it yet I, oh sorry go ahead no go for it go for it I, I, I played with it on the way from home from work and I was actually really impressed the way it tied in a lot of the Facebook pieces because I didn't know what to expect. I knew it had launched. I didn't read a lot about it. Um, but it was nice because I get a lot of, to me, bogus advertising on Facebook in general. Mm -hmm. And with this, I got to kind of curate my additional news feeds, which which I did like. The, the shortcoming to that is I think you're limited to the amount of news feeds you can add on there. Obviously, they're selecting the ones that that you can, or they're selecting the sources for the news that you select. But I, but I really liked the interface, and it actually, because I'm more, I, I'm more interested in people's status updates when they have a photo. So I think it shows and highlights those really well. Um, but I felt like I was looking at a, a side scrolling Twitter, but with much nicer animation and mu a much nicer UI. I, I think they've. And, and from what I was here, and I, I heard something on, a, on I can't remember if I read it somewhere, if it was on another podcast or what, but they were saying they pretty much took this think tank, put them in another room, and said, go do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's it's really, to me, it's really worked. Well, and I, and I, go I, ahead. I, think, I think that that idea there uh, is the same, if I recall reading what Zuckerberg said about another Facebook app that failed miserably, Poke. I think that was the same idea that they put everybody in a room and said, you know, do whatever the hell you want. Um, 
I, I will say the one thing about paper that I sort of I, I'm sort of disappointed by is that they didn't come out with an iPad interface, right? Unless if I missed it. But you know, I, I know when I downloaded it, it, it's just you know I can use the iPhone version blown up. But um, mm -hmm. I almost feel like that's that's so much more conducive, and I think it's great on the iPhone. But I think that's a perfect format to put on the iPad, especially for those of us who who, who uh, were early adopters of Flipboard. Yeah, I don't see it. And usually, if it's if it's a dual mode app, I'll get yeah. a. It automatically comes right. down to my iPad. And that that is a huge bummer that it that it doesn't come over because it is. It would be. It's it. It goes back to I think sort of what you were talking about. It's kind of like a flip Flipboard esque, and that's something that really brings in that format. And that's where even things like Instagram. I'm trying to remember what I loaded. I loaded Flow because I didn't want to see either a window that was this big on an iPad that was this big, or I didn't want to have to to blow it up and then everything gets distorted. So, uh, yeah, it's a. I'm hoping that they would come out with like a tablet. Type design, mm -hmm. and I think it. I think it's coming. I think they just want to stop. Start here, you know. I. I think it's obviously mm -hmm. they're going to get an Android. They're going to get another thing. Uh, what do you guys think about the idea that this can be the way you replace Facebook, the way you interface with Facebook? Are, do you think you guys are going to re replace your Facebook usage with this when you're on at least the iPhone? You know what? I. I don't think I will. I think I. I sort of appreciate having everything just right there. Mm -hmm. uh, in a list form. I mean, I, not to say I wouldn't use it. I think, I think it's, it's brain candy to sit there and flip through it, uh, flip through, flip through paper. And I think I'll use it, but I don't think at least for the time being, um, I, especially things since I think I, I, more of my Facebook usage is, is, is on the tablet. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. yeah using it. And I, like I said, I haven't played with it a lot. And now I'm grabbing my phone to look at it. I didn't see a way to look up, or maybe you can look up a specific person. Yeah, that's friend requests. Yeah, it's really, it's really. Notifications. It, it seems that the whole concept is that everything gets pushed to you because we got, um, we have our notifications at the top. So if somebody messages me, you know, there's a notification, mm -hmm. there's a friend request that'll pop up. But otherwise, this is mostly just a reformatted newsfeed. Now, what do you guys think? You know, like we talked about, there, there's not only is there the news feed, but there's these curated kind of sources that they're doing. Like I, I couldn't find too many that really kind of fit me. I have tech and LOL, and LOL is still a picture of George Costanza uh, from yesterday. <laughs> so I don't know how much that's you know cycling through. Um, I mean, most of it makes sense. I'm looking at tech, and it's like CNN, Money, Tech Crunch. Uh, Verge, I've seen in there. Ars Technica. So, Giga Alms was a, was a Giga, sponsor or partner. So, I don't know. Do 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 you guys like the idea? That there's somebody at Facebook deciding what kind of stuff I'm seeing in this in this regard. Do you think it's Facebook deciding, or do you think it's? Um, I, I, I think the word paid, was these paid up? to be in there, or how do you think that really? I, got I think curated? that's all one in the same, probably. <laughs> to be honest, um, they they they. they, they, they they're deciding either way, and, and I'm sure there's probably people paying to get in those feeds. So, or at least they will be in the future. I think but, Loke had something to say. Oh, I was just drinking some water there, but I think that, uh, <laughs> I, I think I think early on, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if down the road, I'm pretty sure that's going to be a common, uh, a common complaint or a common suggestion from a lot of people, give us a little more input, and I think in due time you, you'll see that. Um, but I think, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of throwing this out and seeing what sticks on the wall. And I think right now, I, I think they're getting a pretty decent response from it. I mean, I'm just shocked that it's not pitchforks and, and, and torches. But I think that's what happens when you fragment your, your apps as opposed to updating the Facebook app itself and saying this is the new this is the new Facebook. But on that and the, on that note, what 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 really pisses me off and I think what the general public doesn't feel to understand is that. Anytime you have a Facebook update, you know, you get people saying, I'm going to boycott Facebook. I'm going to drop Facebook. It's free. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and I remember one, and I, I'll tell people to this day, one, one of the things that precipitated my departure from, from KDK was the day that they gave me a, um, they, they said it was 11 o'clock. It was one of the time, several times Facebook changed their privacy settings. And they said, hey, go to Market Square and see if you can get people reacting to it. Oh, by the way, you have 30 minutes. 
So we go over to we go over to Market Square. Nobody had any idea what the hell we were talking about. But one person said, "I'm tired of Facebook changing." You know, I, uh, what do we pay for? And I said, "Well, you don't pay for Facebook." I think she was thinking her Comcast bill was funding Facebook and everything else. So, um, but I think I actually think it's I think it's a smart idea. I think why not offer different apps? You know, cater to different niches, see what works. And, you know, if there's enough positive reaction down the road, then maybe you start integrating some of the elements of paper into the standard app. It also feels like, to a point, like I've noticed a lot, uh, and, and it's so seamless, I forget it's there, but I forget I have a separate application for chat on my phone. Yeah. Well, yeah, but hit... have you noticed, too, it's integrated? I mean, the one thing, I'm, I'm not too crazy about it, but I see it's suppl- it makes sense that it's supplanted the actual messaging function in the Facebook app. Right. Right. Uh, and it really feels like it. I think this is another thing. And they've kind of broke out how you view the news stream um, and other stuff. And they want to curate stuff, obviously. Um, but it really feels like a Google approach. Because, again, on an iPhone, you know, I'm going from Google app to Google app to Google app. You know, I, I'm looking it up in the Google search and that takes me over to the Google Maps. And then I open a link and it comes up in Google Chrome. Um, I interesting how they're fractured i think you're going to start seeing more and more of this fracturing out for them as well um then you don't have just this giant bloated app that's supposed to do everything (laughs) but we fixed it you know and it broke the things it used to do um because i mean that really seemed to be what they were trying to do a year ago with the facebook home a lot of that stuff like the chat heads which i think are gone now aren't they um actually they're they're small they're, they're still there there's the, yeah, they're small. They're small along like because even I I was I had a chat going today, and they the little chat head showed up actually in paper on the side, oh, which okay. surprised me. The, the the one thing that I I think that they could actually do better curation and actually potentially get some probably not SEO but a better feel for their user population is for someone needs for the the new side of things to let me add my own rss feeds yeah obviously they could then query that to see what is everyone reading and what's everyone looking at yeah if you could you would you'd have me interested if i can i could integrate like all that stuff i have in feedly and just start pouring it into this thing because it really is a nice interface for for reading that stuff oh i do enjoy feedly um Mm -hmm. other than you know feedly's on every platform and this isn't yet so uh, I think it's a good start. Obviously, it's just a start. Uh, John, would you have any? Have you tried this out yet, or are you an Android guy? I, I actually haven't. Uh, no, um, I've got. I have an iPhone. I haven't tried it out yet because I don't know. I'm kind of waiting to see what happens. I'm kind of. I don't feel like adopting a new technology if I think it's going to just falter out. Like when they did Facebook Home, I didn't even bother mm. um, because I didn't think it would last too long. Hearing this, it sounds different than what. I thought it was initially going to be so but then again i might not check it out because i have no i would rather the facebook app i have work properly than have a whole separate app um because the way i view it i i don't know if it's necessarily curtailed the way that you would do it that 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 that's promoting it i guess so i don't even, i mean maybe in a couple months if more people are talking about it i might check it out but until then i kind of just stick to the try true of going through the Facebook app. Although I do use the Messenger app, and I think it's uh, a little bit nicer to have just because it's easier to get to. And I end up, like Facebook Messenger has replaced, you know, a lot of Gchat Messenger for me, especially since where I work, I don't have access to Gchat, mm-hmm. uh, but I do Facebook chat. I, the, for the guys that have tried this so far, did you? what do you guys think of the tutorial going into this thing? I almost think it's necessary. I think because it's such a radical change. I mean, it was a little annoying, uh, but I also think that it's one of those things that <laughs> I, I, I can understand wanting to make sure people get the grasp of. Granted, it's a simple concept, and in the grand scheme of things, I would have picked it up in thirty seconds. But um, you know, I think for for those of for those people out there who aren't necessarily so attuned to it, but they see something new and shiny and want to try it out, uh, it, I was I was kind of shocked. It was pretty loud. <laughs> yeah yeah and, and, and when you think you're, it's done it like for those that haven't tried it out it starts off with this video telling what paper is and it shows you a couple of things like now move your finger this way and, and but then as you go 
it starts suggesting here try this as you as you do things i i wish windows 8 had this i'm still trying to figure out windows 8 uh, <laughs> he's got it is that what is, oh, is that's the intro you? video <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the music from two girls one cup oh, oh. <laughs> the the video that i was actually surprised with the video on the front end of the app it actually reminded me of like an apple commercial yeah like, a little, little bit but then you're right like i i feel like it's the perfect tutorial if i'm going to hand it to a parent or some some of my siblings that aren't so tech savvy the one thing i think to locate's point it, it caught me off guard a couple times and it was loud and it maybe i'm on an ios 7 beta but it it actually brought its for a while it was playing over top of a podcast that i was listening to which i was completely fine with and then like the next time it played it played you would have thought it paused the podcast in the background, but yeah. it played over top and the podcast went silent, See, muted in the background, yeah. but kept playing. And I'm like, so I, when I went back to hit play in the podcast, it was already playing. So I missed like 30 seconds. I had, had, the, I had the exact, I had the exact <laughs> experience with that. We just went like crazy with playing Stitcher in the background. Um, Cause I, I didn't expect like this multimedia experience on my phone, you know, so. Yeah, I wish I wish, and and maybe they'll think think about it in the future for for those that are that um, may have hearing disabilities or something along those lines. But I wish they would have had more animation on how to do something with maybe a little some pop up text versus uh, all being audio instruction. Mm -hmm. So there's no prompt; it just automatically starts playing an audio tutorial and there's no visual attached to it there's there's a minor visual like it'll say tap here and swipe up and then it'll have but if you didn't know what it was trying to prompt you with a tutorial always you would see is this little white circle kind of like push down on the screen and swipe up like so the the audio and the video go hand in hand but they need to have it all in both sides too does it, I mean, are you able to skip through the video or does it just happen and you can't turn it off? They're so short, I don't think you would necessarily need to skip. I don't know, Sorg, if you've seen ones that I haven't, it but I would say the most, most of them are probably maybe three seconds max. Well, it was, I think, I think you and I had the same thing where we just want to get into it and start using it. And it, I would go to a, a article and it would say, here, try this. And I'm like, no, I want to read the article. Um, well, I mean, I just think it's odd that a lot of people are probably trying this app out at the workplace for the first time. Yeah. And then they don't know this is going to happen. And, you know, you could be potentially in the middle of a meeting and all of a sudden try this. And everybody's just staring at you oddly. So I like this. So, so uh, you have an article in here, Chilla, about about uh, this is a side-scrolling Twitter. Yeah, and then I because I didn't know you were going to use it as, as your uh, awesome thing of the week. But that's that's actually what it reminded me of is as I swiped left to right, it then takes you from grouping to grouping. So like mine goes from like Facebook to tech mm -hmm. to there was a photography one to home do you do it yourself and you're, you're swiping left to right on the top half of the screen and it's going from grouping to grouping and then inside of each group you swipe on the bottom of the screen and it it takes you through the articles in that in that section obviously facebook i think is always number one no matter what it, and but it got interesting because like you could then hold down on one of the articles at the bottom and swipe it up so you didn't have half screens. It, it, it's interesting because I'm guessing there's multiple ways of doing a lot of different things in the app. So those that feel like the, option one is intuitive and option two is intuitive, well, they both work. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't really much matter to the, to the end user. I just found it to be an interesting way to, to scroll through information and like to me it would be like if you took your your twitter timeline turn it on its side and swipe left to right and and you're just getting those kind of updates and i maybe it's just because i follow 
a lot of tech news and and a lot of photography stuff and those different same type of things in Twitter. I felt like I was just going through my Twitter feed again. Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right, let's. Uh, I think it's time for talk some Super Bowl uh, Dutters. Super Bowl commercials, go commercials. <laughs> yeah, who wants to watch a game? Ugh, especially that game. That was. Oh awful. man, that was that was sad. <laughs> I, I wanted to cry for Peyton Manning, and that's bad. You know, things are bad when you just feel that bad for Peyton Manning. <laughs> like that's horrid. But uh, I did. I, I enjoyed the commercials, and I, and I love the fact that social media has completely changed the way that I watch the commercials. I immediately watch the commercial, and the first thing I do is I'm on here going, "Okay, what does Twitter have to say about it? Ooh, what well, how's mm-hmm. Facebook going to react to it?" And and there were a couple, what people kind of deemed controversial commercials, as there always are, and and but going in and seeing the reactions to a lot of these commercials and whether or not people like them, I, I think it's a lot more fun. And then just sitting back and watching them, because so you can kind of get, get a camaraderie and enjoy the conversations. Um, one of my favorite ones, one of the tech commercials, was the Microsoft Empowering commercial. I don't know if you guys caught that. I didn't initially, but I got to check it out later. And it, basically, a lot of it is um, what technology can do for people who have different disabilities. Uh, these they, they have the kids in there who had, um, I think they're tibias and fibias, fibulas, um, were non-functioning so they replaced those uh there's the a base a lot of it on on the um a gentleman who can't see who's painting again and uh it's all narrated by this this gentleman who has um Lou Gehrig's disease and, and uses a surface to type all of this out mm-hmm. and that's how it's narrated but it's all about how technology is enriching our lives and yeah so- yeah and, and this is the and this this reminds me back to um, we we did some pieces on Unsung about some technology with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, mm-hmm. um, and you know, like the eye tracking, like basically that's replacing using a mouse because mm-hmm. at that point you know they can't use a mouse anymore, um, and, and other thing other ways that they can because I mean I think I think with that disease eventually they can't even talk mm-hmm. right, and I think that a lot of that was addressed in this too. Um, it, it was funny because one of those is they're doing surgery with a Kinect. Yes. And so, and so I, I didn't. I, did you see how they were using the Kinect? The Kinect surgery. The, the way they're doing it is they're manipulating it. In, it's almost like um, if you've ever watched like a CSI or one of those those sh- investigative shows where they're on the screen, they're swiping things from one to the other to the other. And it's kind of a very similar thing where they're just be able to look at these x-rays and manipulate them. He's just turning the x-ray. Okay. Based okay. Upon... So we're not doing surgery with no, this no, thing, no, thankfully. We're, <laughs> we're looking at... <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, it's more of like a um, diagnostic tool versus an actual surgical tool. But you're, it's the same basic thing where you're moving things around and able to move it without having to hold on to. It's a lot. It's a more sterile, also, which is kind of interesting that I didn't think about till later on. Oh yeah, because you're not touching a laptop or something else. You're just and that's and most likely that's like the first connect they're using mm-hmm. there with the new and a new resolution. They can probably do a lot more mm-hmm. fun stuff with it. So that's really a little bit of that. Iron Man computer thing that you're just going like this because mm-hmm. I mean it, the way the connect works it just sees your form mm-hmm. and it knows these are hands because it figures it's connected to this and you can actually see uh, uh, in certain software you can see actually see like where it kind of deciphers where your joints are mm-hmm. and and goes from there uh, so yeah that's pretty cool um, but yeah of course Microsoft you know uh, I mean a big they're into more than just computers. Yes. They're, 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 they're enterprise. They're integrating a lot of this stuff in here. Um, I, I thought that was a really good move of them to do something, like, especially when you have Apple. Mm-hmm. It's always talking about, hey, we're doing iPads. I mean, the, the, uh, the Verse commercial that came out. Yes. Uh, and they've always been saying, hey, we're on healthcare. Hey, we're in this. Microsoft hasn't done that. Microsoft haven't, hasn't really blown their horn on that one mm-hmm. for, and they, for a good while. They haven't tugged at our heartstrings. They no, haven't, they haven't given us an emotional attachment to Microsoft. It, it, Microsoft has been very sterile. And it's mm-hmm. just very, it's technology, that's it. And now we're associating it with something more, oh, wow, this is what they're doing for people to improve their lives. This is a great company. I mean, in your mind, you're going, this is a really a company that cares about people. Mm-hmm. And I think that's also a great move on their behalf. And you also I, got, got things. I think I just, uh, I don't know. I saw the dude with the robot hand and all I thought of was Skynet and Terminator. <laughs> it's like, so it begins. <laughs> yeah. It is, but I think they're touching on obviously robotics a little bit there. Um, but so is Google. You know, I have to think Apple is at some point touching on robotics in there too. And then what you touched on with the Connect is the interesting thing about people and technology is we'll create a technology for a specific purpose, but we'll then evolve and change it ourselves to another purpose. You know, actually, I think the Connect wasn't necessarily for gaming at first. Oh, really? Like I think they. 
if I recall, they mm-hmm. bought or licensed the company because I think the company actually went on. They're doing more stuff outside of Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and they said, hey, this would work really good for video games. Um, and but, that company was recently bought by Apple. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so there you go. Um, I, I think the I think the commercial actually did it was, was much better for Microsoft. And, and, and to your point of showing what they can do, because I think they've lost that on the Windows side of the house. Whereas uh, maybe the phone, they've they've tried to pick that up, and maybe they're now trying to bring it into the rest of their services and devices. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I thought, to, to Dutter's point, it definitely tugged the heartstrings, which I thought got people's attention. Now let's hope they can keep people's attention. So uh, I think it's something that Microsoft tends to make that big bang, and then it fades away for a long time. So I'm ho- hoping they can keep this momentum going. They, they have a good chance right now at keeping people's attention in the news and in the media. I mean... They announced their new CEO. I think it was a t- it was either today or late late yesterday. Um, you got a lot of Windows 8 stuff coming up with Build Conference. Um, I forgot to put it in the show notes, but they're actually offering if you buy an Xbox Music Pass and you're an AT and T or T Mobile customer, or even if you're not, um, you get a free phone. So there, there's a lot of interesting things coming out of Microsoft right now. That they could they could really ride this hopefully ride this through for a long time. I mean I'm an Apple fanboy um, when it comes to you know your personal computer, but I'll give Microsoft some props. In the last couple of years, they've made a lot of great strides into trying to share up that gap of usability and more customer friendly products. Um, and the biggest thing I see them doing is that like this point of singularity. Um, a lot of their things that they're developing are a all the interfaces are pretty much the same interface across platforms and all those platforms interact with each other. So your phone, your laptop, your Surface, or your the biggest thing, the Xbox, having all of those things be have the same exact usability and being interconnected, that I mean, that's the future. Mm-hmm. And I don't see anybody else doing it on that, on the on the level of consistency that they're doing it. I have yet to see anybody else making those strides. Yeah, I would agree. I, I'm a huge Apple, Mac, iPad, iPhone. Um, if they do this right, it'll put them on par. It'll, it'll just be interesting if, and I'm seeing, like for right now with my Surface tablet that I have as a demo unit, it won't connect to Wi-Fi. Like I'm seeing, I'm seeing they're going through some growing pains as they change, and I think Apple's seeing some of that too, a little bit. But it's not near as bad as some of the some of the media play that that the Windows 8 and 8.1. They're they're constantly talking about changes that they're going to have to make to appease the public. Apple seems to be more along the lines of. Here's what we've created for you, and you are going to like it because we told you you're going to like it. And, but, yeah, I think I, a lot of those problems for Microsoft goes away as more and more household consumption of products moves towards tablet design, and really the only people using PCs will be for work purposes. Which at some point, I don't know if that you know that squared touch interface makes sense for a work desktop as of now, but you never know what happens in two years when we have Tony Stark interfaces. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I know there's no, there's no purpose for it in the, I'm actually running a windows eight machine here for, for this Wirecast, And just, I just threw that away right off the bat to lead all the squares were right off, you know, right out the window. Um, yeah. Uh, so there's another super bowl thing. <laughs> I was actually kind of surprised because usually I don't see like my Twitter feed go crazy when contests prop up. And this seemed to do it. Mm-hmm. So what, what, what did the insurance do? And uh, Juggalo John brought this up too um, with the hashtag insurance save 30. And uh, essentially the premise, if you haven't seen it, you're obviously living under a rock at this point. But um, the premise was is they save $1.5 million by having the commercial on after the Super Bowl as opposed to during the Super Bowl. So they wanted to give this money away. In order to enter this contest, you had to type anything you wanted and hashtag it, insurance save 30. Which turned into a great idea because everyone was tweeting it. Everybody, every everybody's tweet just had that at the end, and each one was a separate entrance entry, so everybody was doing it. I had the unfortunate experience where I hashtagged it for as a joke uh, 
what we're going to talk about today in Awesome Cash, and I hashtagged it eSurance Save 30, eSurance responded to me and said, I saw what you did there, that was clever, now try this, blah, blah, blah. And what happened was I had 60 plus, I, don't even, I, I lost count of how many people favorited that tweet because they, for whatever reason, they retweeted it, they favorited it. And these are legitimate people who were, for whatever reason, think they're going to win by retweeting me or favoring this. <laughs> and which normal world wouldn't be a big deal because I, I do get my, with Twitter, I do get my favorite whenever something is favorited or I get a retweet or something, I get an email because I, that doesn't happen a whole <laughs> bunch in my world. But I've gotten emails nonstop since, ye since yesterday when they, re they tweeted back at me. And it's just been a pain the but <laughs> like I didn't realize this was a thing that people did. It's such did. a pain to be successful at Twitter. I know. Somehow I'm so witty and funny. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I just noticed an article before we came on where uh, eSurance it kind of it, it didn't quite backfire. I don't know if you ever heard the story of the McDonald's stories hashtag where McDonald's started this brilliant ad campaign where they would hashtag McDonald's stories mm. and everybody would tweet about oh you know I went took my family to McDonald's how great it was and then people hijacked that tweet their um, hashtag and said horrible things about McDonald's. Well, eSurance was seeing a little bit of that backlash. Like uh, someone had tweeted that uh, the Nazis run eSurance, hashtag eSurance save 30. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag. <laughs> they, they did say whatever you wanted. So, yeah, anything yeah, you wanted. Yeah. So, it, it, But it hasn't been taken over too bad. It's just a lot of people have muted it, obviously. It, hashtag. And I noticed the next day um, they were saying, oh, follow us to get another, like, another yeah. percentage of a chance. And then and... my bogus accounts. Oh, showed yeah? up. How many bogus Twitter accounts showed up? People, you know, were just making up random insurance Twitter accounts and saying, "Hey, retweet us for another chance," and they weren't the real insurance accounts. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's it, we're talking about insurance probably more than we've ever talked about insurance. So. Good job. Never even thought about them. <laughs> exactly. That's what, what did do you guys did you guys participate in the insurance uh, situation here? I I did, <laughs> just just shamelessly. I think I only get it once or twice and that was about it i figured why not it was that easy the opportunity was out there so let's just do it and get it over with yeah <laughs> you knew everybody else was at the same time did anybody else notice the jc penny that was yes. brilliant yes that was absolutely brilliant see, when see. you talk about a retailer that's so starved for relevance <laughs> <laughs> oh, seriously. because what ki what killed and it's the guy from apple ron johnson who took over from took over J.C. Penney? I don't know. If it, I think it was last year, and had this idea that what they were going to do is change the entire pricing scheme of, of, of J.C. Penney. I think it was two years ago. Now that I think about it, and it just backfired because they did what they did what Macy said they were going to do. And Macy's came into Pittsburgh when they took over um, Lazarus, and they said we're not going to do coupon sales anymore. You know, it's just going to be we're going to we're going to post the prices. We're going to put we're going to offer low prices, and people don't go for that. You know, people want their coupons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, so J.C. Penney has been trying to. First of all, the first thing they've had to do is is go back from what they what 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 they changed into back into trying to to go back to their old image, but not too far back. Because you know, my mom, the quintessential J.C. Penney shopper, hated J.C. Penney after after they they changed. You know, but but what they were doing social media wise. I mean, at first you're thinking, oh man, I, you know, I think we all reacted the same way, but then, then you know, oh sorry, mitten, tweeting with Mittens, and then having all the other brands interacting with them, I thought that was hysterical. Yeah, that was great. I, was, I, I actually retweeted one of these. Uh, uh, Snickers, at Snickers, said, eat a Snickers, you're not you when you're hungry. And it, they retweeted the, who knew, all misspelled, who knew this is going to be a ball game, <laughs> but ball ball game, or whatever. Um, and so we, I was like, it, 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 uh, Kia... Uh, came back and says you maybe you should get a designated driver um and there was a few other ones too it was tremendous and then they went about like about half time and they said oh sorry we had mittens on because mm -hmm. it's cold in here yeah and, they, and then then they posted an ad for the U team usa mittens <laughs> and then and then people were people they were giving out mittens on you know they were saying dms will, will you know dms an address will send you the uh We'll send you the. Uh, we'll send you send you the mittens. Oh yeah. Oh wait, wait, wait. Here, I, I didn't actually see the pictures before. Uh, let me pop these up here. Uh, so th yeah. this is this is them. I guess this is yeah the third. So it was during the game, and there's actually a picture of them uh, typing with mittens. <laughs> I love that. That's that's so cool. That's the best thing they've done in forever. Well, everybody. Was, I... Oh, sorry. 
No, I was going to say, can I go? I actually, Dutters, you're probably more interesting than what I'm about to say, so go for it. Well, no, everybody was making their planned. Remember how last year Oreo and you could still dunk in the dark? Everybody yeah. was planning in advance these very nifty social media things that they were going to do in case something happened. I'm sure there were a lot of campaigns like just waiting to happen that didn't actually happen. True. I, I'm afraid to see New York considering that. <laughs> what would you post in the event of a dirty bomb attack at MetLife Stadium, you know? <laughs> would Lysol would Lysol post something? <laughs> well, I missed. Did that one? One of my favorite commercials was actually the Bud Light commercial. Yeah, where they had the guy that they found in a bar. He thought it was a like, um, a focus group. If we give you this yeah. bottle of Bud Light, will you follow us around and do whatever we want you to do for the rest of the evening? And he's like, yes. So then it, the screen kind of goes uh, faded out, and it's like, this commercial will be about whatever is an Ian Rappaport and how he did not even realize that he was going to be in a Bud Light commercial. Follow him along tonight. And I, I don't know if I missed a bunch of commercials, but I saw, like, one or two more, and then I feel like I lost track of Ian. That's about it. I, yeah. like, I think it pretty much ended with, he, with him, with Arnold Schwarzenegger, playing ping pong and ending up at a New Republic concert was it yeah he was on stage that's the last one i saw but i feel yeah. like there should have been some kind of, of conclusion I, I i almost expected it to be and and to see what happens next almost like a GoDaddy commercial go go check us out at this website i, I know uh, don Cheadle in a in an elevator with a llama <laughs> <laughs> why not right um so yeah i, I felt uh not crazy, but I, I thought I, I, I was surprised there wasn't any. There was like one Doritos commercial. They're usually pretty good. Mm -hmm. No Mountain Dew. Like like I felt like that was kind of a weird mix, you know. A lot of car commercials. A lot of car. Always commercials. lots of car commercials. I, I don't know what it, between Christmas and Super Bowl there have been more car commercials than ever. And of course, you have to mention the Muppets and Toyota. Yes, I yes. love that. That was that was that was amazing, and uh, what's his face? Uh, Tony or not Tony? Um, Terry Crews. Terry Crews. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I, I will say a lot of the ad experts said the the one thing they took away from the Super Bowl this year was it wasn't so much you know after times of national tragedy you saw a lot of the sentimental ads you know and and you we kind of went back to that this year we saw a lot of sentimental ads a lot of a lot of ads that played it straight not too many uh, not too many sexy ads. You know, like you, you no. didn't have the, you know, you, you didn't have that. Uh, one ad that I think that kind of dropped the ball, though, and it kind of has the technology angle. And I, when I was when I was doing the story with AT and T yesterday, um, the regional manager for AT and T in southeastern Massachusetts, and I talked about this, was the Ellen the Ellen DeGeneres dancing commercial, and the, she was promoting Beats Audio, the new the, the Beats Audio streaming service. And first of all. You're seeing a lot of Ellen ads because she's hosting the Academy Awards and she's dancing and that's about it. It's just Ellen dancing. Hey, watch the Academy Awards. <laughs> so what that ad, you know, they, they had this ad and I, and I was I watched it for a second because I like Ellen. I think she's funny, but I had no idea what she was promoting mm -hmm. other than it was just something involving Beats Audio. So I didn't know if she was promoting the headphones or what. And I come to hear that AT and T's all in on this new streaming music service, which is going to go up against Spotify, where they're going to um, they're trying to go up against Spotify and from from all appearances it looks like it's going to be the same exact thing maybe just a different interface but um you would know that from from seeing the ad so i think at&t was a little upset that uh that you know now they're gonna to have to explain that to consumers as they come into the stores and wonder what beats audio streaming services yeah i think the only thing that disappointed me about that commercial besides i mean to me that the whole not knowing what it is i mean i knew what it was just because yeah, I, yeah. maybe i'm in the know but the fact that they missed the chance to have a commercial with Ellen DeGeneres and Dr. Dre, I think, is a big <laughs> missed opportunity that could have been fantastic. Oh, yeah. Um, and we're talking about the cars still. I want to just follow up. Like, the whole – I love that there was, like, you know, a couple of years ago we had Clint Eastwood and this very, like, oh, America and the conservatives went crazy. And this year they gave us the left version of that with Bob Dylan. <laughs> awesome <laughs> all right i want to touch on a couple of stories real quick here before we get out of here uh chromecast opening up the sdk sdk i'm, I'm a chromecast user i'm really excited about that um are, you, are any of you guys following this story 
I, yeah, I posted it in there, and it's something that I think is really interesting because I think it's it, – their device hasn't been out that long, and I think it just shows the adoption rate and the ability for people to integrate it. And if – I think it's going to get interesting. So the whole point of Chromecast was to – take over a stream that you have on your device and throw it up on a TV or anything that will display HDMI. Mm -hmm. Now you put this in the hands of the developers and even in, in the iPad world, there's been a couple of companies that have taken the theory of, of airplay and they give you, they throw a browser up on your TV screen and the screen experience is completely different. So I'm hoping that a lot of developers with the Chromecast take this theory and uh, and really allow for not just taking over something that I'm streaming and pushing it up onto the TV. The other thing that I've heard people say, and, and I actually, sadly enough, I am a Chromecast owner and it's still in the box from Christmas. Oh, so no. I haven't plugged it in yet. But I here it says peel here. Um, <laughs> but... but um, I'm, I'm hoping that it'll give me a reason to really take it out of the box and not just stream something that I already have and have a laggy window open on my screen. You know, but I've been loving that. I've been loving that openness to be able to send stuff up. I, I, I send I send streams sitting on my Mac Mini, uh, like stuff streaming to a browser on my Mac Mini upstairs in the office, down to my living room TV. It works pretty decently uh, as far as, I mean, it's not as perfect as if you're using hulu or netflix or anything like that uh, but the idea that they've opened this sdk up that that hopefully will end up in more apps i'd love if it was in the this week in tech app i'd love if it popped mm -hmm. up in the source fed app just so i can go to, through those and say oh okay i can find the same videos on youtube let's go look for those in the app um uh, I, I like i like the idea and actually i've had to set, help somebody set up uh airplay uh i've never played really have never played with airplay and apple tv and stuff and i'm like looking at this and i'm like wow it is a it's simple enough but it seems a lot simpler it's like i got this like basically her complaint was i got this hundred dollar box and i can't really do anything with it they completely lied to me at the apple store and i was like oh then it's like well back of my head is like oh, i should have got a chromecast you know it's like you have an iphone you have all this stuff chromecast would have done you fine you know? Can I tell you a quick airplay story? Sure. Involved involved me, me embarrassing myself on TV. Um, so, uh, let's see, about a year ago, we, uh, you know, a lot of TV stations are moving towards these, like, giant touch screens where they can show, it's kind of pointless, it's just like a whiz-bang thing. Yeah. So what they decided to do was, we in our studio put up a large plasma TV attached to an iPad and Apple TV. So, you know, obviously you have to have a Wi-Fi connection, but the Wi-Fi was really weak and they didn't know that at the time. So one day I was doing a story about how to track sexual predators in your, in your neighborhood. And we had a map, so I had the map up on my iPad and we're kind of showing, here's the map. And we, we'd go to a soundbite and during the soundbite, the Wi-Fi crapped out and, and the Apple TV went into screensaver mode. And the screensaver, defaulted screensaver on my, on my Apple TV is the cute fuzzy sea animals. So we came back to me on the air. They, 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 they didn't, you know, the, the people in the control room thought it was hysterical. They didn't even bother to take me off. Uh, they put me back on the screen. <laughs> so as I'm talking about how to prevent your kids from be being raped, uh, there are pictures of fuzzy, fuzzy animals behind me on the screen. <laughs> so uh, we have since reinstalled uh, the Wi-Fi setup, and, and no longer is that the case. But it was, uh, it was pretty. It, to this day, they, they still have screen caps posted somewhere <laughs> in the building. <laughs> well, I've seen it. The, the one thing that surprises me a lot about AirPlay is that, and and we're starting to look look to use it for work. People not understanding the um, do not disturb mode on your device. And you see people's iMessages coming up and you see <laughs> people's uh, just Facebook notifications, all these banner type things that are that, that are personal to that user and they're in the middle of giving a presentation. And to your point, it's just like, oh, I didn't mean for anyone to see that or oh, but, and people just don't think about 
that whole private side of their life yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. that they don't want I, you know, everyone do, to see in, in a conference room. I, I think I could do one, one better. We were waiting on uh, to do a, do a hangout yesterday, and all the PA students were sitting around on the other end of the hangout, and they were just talking about whatever. And uh, apparently, I, I don't even know what school they went to, honestly, um, but uh, they, they, they all get iPads, and, and it's all like they have a technology fee, and they're kind of complaining about that. But it's a shared account. So you can get all the apps and people don't realize <laughs> that. So now you're getting everybody's text messages and everything. And, and it was like, it's kind of a nightmare when you first get on there. Uh-huh. Um, it, it was, it was kind of interesting to see that they're, they're doing that. Like, like, presumably, I guess they, they probably just put everybody, uh, you probably know this chiller from, from administrating iDevices. Um, I, I, I'm guessing they're, they're putting everything under administrator mode so they can port down their apps and, and they, they just kind of leave it open. Well, we actually, um, we don't provide, well, most, the majority of time we don't provide devices, so you don't get a corporate device. Yeah. If you want to use a device, you have to bring your own. So it's already outside of so, it. So, yeah, I mean, and then we're letting you connect and you'll be on a Wi-Fi network that would have a, a, an Apple TV um, connect to it. And you off, you have to authenticate to that network because they don't want someone just walking in and throwing stuff up on the Apple TV and there's a password and all that kind of stuff. Um, the Apple TVs do now have the ability to be device managed, so we'll look at doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, but it's interesting that the different conundrums you can get into when you're displaying your own personal device up on a screen. Uh, from from the point of Chromecast, I guess I like the fact that Chromecast I could then turn my device off and Chromecast has taken over that connection or that stream, which is nice. I guess I don't. I've never had a problem airplaying, and I, and I mean, even from a non-technical point of view, the way they have it now with just swipe up and airplay, mm-hmm. I, I don't see that to be too difficult. I just see there's in the airplay world and the Apple TV world, I feel like there's more for me personally right now to leverage the device. I don't, in the same respect of someone could come into the house and they may have a flip phone they can grab the remote and bring up the, the apple tv and every all, all of our movies all everything's right all music so there's the netflix app there's hbo to go all of that is right there without having to have an, an additional device it's not it, yeah the apple tv can survive on its own it doesn't need supplemental devices to, to, to help it along and that's why it's 100 bucks versus 35 because all, all yep. the heavy lifting is being done somewhere else, like your phone or something. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, let's wrap it up. Uh, first, uh, Jim Loki, I know you have to get out of here. Uh, tell us, uh, you got anything to plug? Where can people find you up there in Boston, at least on the uh, online side of things? Yeah, you can find me at Loki. And actually, um, which really to the audience doesn't, I don't think, need a whole lot. But uh, our, our station is now streaming everything online at WCVB.com. But we're actually, uh, we stream all our newscasts online. Uh, as we discussed before, my company has uh, is engaged in a lawsuit with Aereo. So <laughs> they, uh, in the meantime, started streaming all the newscasts online, but more so in the next couple of months, we're rolling out a, an app where we will stream programming from our station on mobile devices 24 hours a day. Uh, it'll be free of charge. Awesome. So that's going to be interesting to see how that works Did out. See- yeah, uh, at Loke, and I'll, I'm going to be out in the elements. We have a big storm coming up here, so I have to get up early, and you, you'll get to see me... Uh, get back to my traffic routes tomorrow because I'll be in the traffic tracker as we have somebody driving. I'll be sitting in the front seat describing the road conditions with that <laughs> mounted uh, camera on the windshield. Nice. <laughs> that journalism degree is really paying off, guys. <laughs> I just saw one of those yesterday from I-70. I was like, hmm. um, excellent. So WCVB.com. I think I got the right one there. You can go check that out. Did you see that they're running out of uh, uh, antennas for the New York area service? I did. It's 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 catching on, and you know, I, hey, look. I mean, I'm, I I can't. You know, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to weigh in either way on it, but uh, but uh, it's it's a really interesting concept. So I, I'm not surprised to see it's it's that successful. Awesome. And John DeGore is with the Creative Briefs podcast, great Pittsburgh podcast with creative people. Go check that out. It's in my stream. You got anything coming up you want to plug? No, just uh, go check out Creative Briefs, and uh, you can find me on Twitter at Diggy. That's it. 
Awesome. Oh, wait, no. Correction, I do. A couple months ago, I put together a fundraiser for the Hollywood Theater in Dormont. You can go to uh, handmadeforthehollywood.org and buy some awesome limited edition posters. Uh, they're all handmade by local artists here in Pittsburgh. Awesome. I love that Hollywood theater. We were just there for uh, Nights of Ben Aslam a couple weeks ago. Oh, amazing movie. Yes. So much yes. fun. <laughs> we were actually thinking going back for Pulp Fiction this month. So. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great theater, so I tried to put together this fundraiser to help them meet that uh, Go Digital or Go Dark campaign yes. so they can get a new uh, projector and stay in business. Is there, a, is there a date that they have to have it by still, or is it still just a um, thing? I don't think there's a date, per se. I know they had wanted to do it within a year of when it started, mm -hmm. but it's it's close to that year point, yeah. um, and I don't quite know where they're at at this point. I don't think it's bad. I think if they haven't met it, they're getting pretty close. I think the biggest, the biggest, yeah. I think they're about halfway from when we were in there before, from Good. the from the little meter thing they mm -hmm. have. Um, again, the biggest, I, I think the biggest deadline is like that. Without the projector, they're going to be able to show less and less movies. Mm -hmm. Like that, really, yeah. That just kind of cuts in. I know mm -hmm. they can't do Rocky Horror. I, I, they did something where they did Rocky Horror in recent months. I know, uh, but it's it's something with the studios say you have to use this format which requires this projector, which requires mm -hmm. us, them raising $75,000. Um, because especially with something like Rocky Horror, you can't, I, I forget if you can't find, yeah, you can't find the so, original prints, right? Mm -hmm. But and, but they're not allowed to use DVDs anymore. Yeah, that's part of the issue. They could use the DVDs. It's like a catch-22 almost. They're like, yeah, you could use the DVDs, but only if you have this type of projector. So they're just kind of, you know, they're out of luck either way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just, uh, you know, you guys, you know, think about your licensing and everything, why stuff's on Netflix and this and all over the place are getting pulled off of Amazon. It's even worse for the theaters, I bet, uh, from the sounds of it. And that's a little. Yeah. Idea. I mean, but that's what sucks is that it's fine for all these bigger theaters that have tons of money behind them to just go out and grab oh, a yeah. projector. But it's really hurting all these smaller theaters. And that's why you've seen like that drive in promotion that I think. I think a car company put on this summer to try and like, you know, you vote for mm -hmm. your favorite drive in, the one who gets the most votes gets a projector. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. And of course, at Chilla on Twitter, John Chilla. What's up? Hey, try, um, <laughs> make sure you pay attention. I know Windows leaked some data about the update, their upco upcoming update. I just actually installed iOS 7.1 Beta 5 today. So I'm guessing that's going to launch soon, and then you have Mac OS. And I'm guessing soon, within the next month, we're going to hear about a slew of different conferences coming up. Microsoft has their conference. I think Apple has theirs, so I'm sure we'll be getting some new products. Awesome. And at K Dutters for Katie over here. Hi, guys. And um, I brought my little friend. I don't know if you saw my little buddy, Grimlock, but I'm pretty darn excited. Yeah, I know you talked about it in the movie a minute, but um, I'm excited to see the new Transformers movie because it does look like Optimus Prime is riding Grim Grimlock, and that's just fantastic. Why not? Why not? That's, a, that's an image we needed. Um, I, yeah, I'm excited. I, I, it's been up and down with that series, yeah. but I, I'm going to see it regardless of what it ends up. Yeah. It can't be as bad as the second one. Yeah, yeah. I figure that's their low point. We've learned from that. We've de Shia Buff. We've de Megan Foxed it. Yeah. Mark Wahlberg. Mark good. Wahlberg, come on. That's, I mean, that adds a level of badass them to this yeah. right there. Uh, so, with that, guys, if you want to join us here live every Tuesday night, live.sorgatronmedia.com around 6 30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, you can also drop us a line. We're at AwesomeCast on Facebook, on Google, AwesomeCast at uh, sorgatronmedia.com, uh, iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, wherever you want to subscribe to us on video and audio formats. Um, and with that, hey, thanks to our awesome chat room that's been hopping all night, uh, letting us know about the insurance and stuff, and sending me a great uh, Muppets Vine. Thanks, John. Um, oh, Radio Shack. The Radio oh, Shack. Oh, how could yeah. you forget? Oh, that's that was all of our childhood. That was all oh. of our childhood, and, and they want it back. Uh, they, uh, oh, 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 go to Radio, go to Radio Shack's website. They are giving away '80s prizes. There's uh, like a Pac-Man table. There was. Um, you have to you pick one of the prizes that you like and then you hashtag it or tweet it about these particular prizes. It's a whole list of they 80s. They have Hubert. Yeah, they, there's it's a whole list of prizes that you can win. It's, it's original 80s prizes, and That's it's awesome. just yeah, like I said, there was the Pac-Man table, which is just magic. And now I'm gonna be looking for Gus Glitz, aka Mr. Game Show. 
Yes. Because I'm, yes. <laughs> uh, I want that badly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And with that, thanks to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Yeah.